this is the state of the college. So Madam Chair, former presidents, current and former trustees, faculty, staff, students, all who have created, cared about, sustained Hampshire College, our unique experiment, dear friends, welcome. This gathering is a moment to honor our remarkable past, celebrate the present, and set our sights on the future. It is, as Gay pointed out and as Chuck pointed out yesterday, 50 years since the extraordinary combination of vision and daring and generosity and perhaps just a dash of looniness <laughs> came together to create the moment that, that this new enterprise was incorporated and formally launched. Chuck told us a little bit about that story yesterday afternoon, but I was wondering what you were all doing. Did, did, did you know how momentous it was? Did you lift a glass of champagne when you incorporated? Um, for us looking now, Chuck's shaking his head, no, it's just a, a piece of business that got done. Well, we honor it today. It is 45 years since those of you who were in Hampshire's first class arrived at an unfinished campus for an unaccredited school to become part of a totally unpredictable experiment in education. Everyone involved, students, faculty, and staff, administrators, was taking a huge leap of faith. It is our good fortune that you did. I want to start by adding my thanks and recognition to some of the individuals involved. We can't do it often enough. Chuck and Polly, we start with you, your energy, your courage, your wisdom, your charm, your land acquisition skills made the whole thing happen. Bob Burney, who is here, where is Bob? Bob Burney and Ken Rosenthal, seated in the front row, who did so much to turn a far-fetched concept into an operational reality. Adele Simmons and Greg Prince, who led the college through triumphs and hard times alike with enormous grace, love of the students, determination, and passion for what the school stands for. Uh, Aaron Berman, alum, professor, former dean of faculty, Hampshire parent, I think the only individual who has held every single role on this campus. <laughs> And Panina, is Panina here this afternoon? So uh, Panina Glazer, who guided the creation of so much that works in our approach and culture, both Panina and Aaron have mentored so many of us and, and lent the school its tone and values. Thank you. And of course, founding faculty, staff, and pioneering students who turned repurposed orchards and cow pastures into a turbulent, exciting, unpredictable, innovative, high profile, and profoundly influential educational experiment. I hope that this weekend leaves each of you sore from loving hugs and overwhelmed by appreciation for the many ways you have changed people's lives and the course of higher education. Kudos and thanks to every one of you. Take a moment, look around, feel proud. So look at the campus, of course, from Wildflower Meadow to restored coal science, but more important at the people, the still inspired and inspiring faculty, the deeply committed and mission-driven staff, the hundreds of uh, the, the alumni who are, here, who are here and the thousands of alumni whom you represent. This place of ours was created on the premise that if a school could shift the focus from teaching to learning, the results might be extraordinary. The alumni, of course, are the proof. So speaking to the alumni, you imagined questions. You wrestled with the maddening way that the search for answers only deepened the question. You recruited faculty to advise and challenge and partner with you. You created an open source education whose content was and is everywhere, not just in books or classrooms. It was in your experiences. You ignored conventional approaches and experimented, failed, and tried anew. You invented ways to turn your ideas into action. And that skill, 
it turns out, stays with you and empowers you. You are, as a group, very good at change, able to reinvent yourselves in ways that other people wish that they could emulate. Where others fear uncertainty, Hampshire alums see opportunity. You create change, you ride the wave of change, you are the change, and this is the time of change, the great acceleration, some call it. Technology, institutions, the nature and scale of knowledge, the way we communicate, the biogeochemistry of the earth, everything is changing. Today, Hampshire's strategy is titled Educating for Change and Changing Education. It's the product of a broadly inclusive community pro process and is premised on a simple mission, quote, to foster a lifelong passion for learning, inquiry, and ethical citizenship that inspires students to contribute to knowledge, justice, and positive change in the world, and by so doing, to transform higher education. And by so doing, to transform higher education. Think, think what the school has already done to accomplish that end, and we're just getting started. Even more simply, to know is still not enough. We live this mission, and I'd like to take a moment to tell you how we do that by letting you know about some of what's going on and some of what's planned. So this is going to be a little bit of a list of brags, because there's a lot going on on this campus that we are incredibly proud of. As you're aware, Hampshire students are exceptional. But did you know that in the last three years, Hampshire students won nine Fulbrights, three Princess Grace Awards, and this year alone, in addition, they received two Gilman Fellowships and two Humanity in Action Awards. I don't know of any other liberal arts college with anything like that record. And the Div 3s, I, I, I wish that you had all been here just before commencement to witness the amazing Div 3s, from the exquisitely sensitive exploration of the art, architecture, and cultural politics of the Jewish community of Manhattan's Lower East Side, to the fabrication of nanoparticles and their use for toxic cleanup. They astonish me. They astonish me every year. These are students who have had the privilege to work with faculty not as instructors, but as partners in discovery, and who have found their way to extraordinary insight and achievement. At the same time, our students continue the Hampshire tradition, the imperative of working for social change. It's an honor to support students' political engagement and activism, including this year their leadership in response to the Black Lives Matter movement and the demand to divest from the prison industrial complex. By the way, Hampshire's policy of investing our funds to align with our mission and values meant that we were not, in fact, invested in any of the companies at issue and will not be uh, a, a nice outcome for Hampshire. I, I have to tell you one story uh, about protest. I, I was at a meeting, a very solemn meeting of college presidents, um, which because of its solemnity was a little bit boring. Um, and a number of presidents were furtively checking their email on their little handheld devices, and mine pinged, and, and I looked and, and saw that I'd gotten a, a text from one of the students who worked as a work study in the president's office. It was a picture of him and seven other Hampshire students seated cross-legged arm in arm getting arrested in front of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. They had huge smiles on their faces. The guards had huge smiles on their faces and I laughed out loud. And the president of a very distinguished college sitting next to me said, well, what's going on? And I said, oh, it's, it's my students, they're getting arrested. <laughs> Faculty. Faculty continue to experiment, introducing new programs. Here are some examples. Queer studies, game design, Africana studies, entrepreneurship, curatorial studies, food, farm, and sustainability, and ethics and the common good. This last, an approach to ethical leadership that connects powerfully 
with Hampshire's tradition of social engagement and has been made possible by a generous alum and her sister. In addition to a multitude of books, articles, and works of art, as teachers, artists, writers, scholars, scientists, and activists, Hampshire faculty have won scores of awards and competitive grants from Google to Guggenheim, from the American Public Health Association to the Smithsonian, the Mellon Foundation, the Gates Foundation, and many, many more. In the last three years, we've hired 21 new faculty, outstanding young teachers, who have come to Hampshire because they believe in what we do and welcome the opportunity to be innovators in their teaching. 15 of the 21 are women, seven of the 21 are people of color. All are committed to Hampshire's approach to education. This is the future for anyone who worries that when our beloved founders depart, the culture will be lost. Feel okay about it. These are terrific young people and they are very committed. Hampshire alumni, so you go on to great things, you know that. Two thirds of our graduates earn advanced degrees within 10 years of commencement. And we continue to rank in the top 1% in the proportion of our students that go on to get the highest degree in their field, an absolutely astonishing figure. More than a quarter of Hampshire graduates have started their own organizations, social ventures, investment firms, advocacy organizations, film companies, art galleries, or creative mashups of all of those together and more. They're literally creating platforms for putting their ideas into action, which is what landed Hampshire on Forbes' short list of the most entrepreneurial schools. That one was a bit of a surprise, <laughs> but nice. Hampshire alums and faculty won five Academy Awards last year. Maybe not such a surprise, but nice. We remain an experimenting college, centered on learners and driven by inquiry, and we're committed to telling that story, telling the story of why it matters to the world. But some things are changing. Over the past year, we've made a radical change in the way we approach admissions, shedding conventional recruitment practices and consultants that sell them, particularly the consultants that sell them. We have focused on identifying, recruiting, and supporting the students who will thrive at Hampshire. We're all about thrivers. We threw out the SAT and it corresponding standardized tests, which did not predict Hampshire's success and which are strongly biased against low-income students and students of color. We made it, yeah, I agree. So, you know, that was, that was something we just did because it made sense for us, because the figures just showed that it was stupid to look at the test scores. It turned out to be the best piece of advertising that any school has ever done. <laughs> because we did it according to our values and people got that message. We made it way harder to apply to Hampshire. You have to write a lot of essays. I mean a lot of essays. And we communicated bluntly to applicants about Hampshire's uniqueness and quirks. We redirected financial aid from discounting to meeting more of the need of low-income students. The result, our yield, that is the percentage of students to whom we offered positions who actually came, went from a dangerously low 18% up to 29% in a single year. And again, just an amazing turnaround. The entering class is by any measure the best qualified we have admitted in years, and the diversity at 31% domestic students of color is by a significant margin the highest level that we have ever had in an entering class in our history. So it turns out that by focusing on your mission and doing the right thing, the right things happen. This shift from a revenue-driven to a mission-driven approach to admissions is right for Hampshire, it's the right thing to do, and it's making a huge difference for us. Going forward, as we do more to tell our story and communicate our uniqueness, we believe we will see a growing impact on admissions. With your help, we'll do better and better at finding the thrivers for whom this education is a magnificent opportunity. And again, with your help, we will make it affordable to all of those students. Going forward in the academic program, we intend to increase the support for faculty and student innovation, 
improving technology and infrastructure to foster experimentation and adding resources for scientific uh, research and teaching and to help them tell the story of their innovations to the world. We've been way too quiet about who we are and that's going to end. We want to make sure that the extraordinary things that our faculty do influence education more broadly. That's the second part of the message, the mission. Educating for change and changing education. We will develop a center for community engagement and experiential learning that links all of the many programs across campus and facilitates greater coordinate, coordination of internship and experiential learning opportunities and simplifies the process for students who want to get engaged. We will create an institute for race and ethnic studies which will intensify academic programming, research and study abroad in areas that address the histories and perspectives of underrepresented communities. We're also working to be more intentional about culture and place here on campus. So as Gay mentioned, you may have noticed some physical changes, um, right? This was a road and a parking oval and a bus stop. Uh, we took it back for people. Um, in fact, what we did was to eliminate a fossil fuel spear pointed at the heart of the campus and say, no, this is, this is our space. And of course, there's some construction underway right behind you. The RW Kern Center, a building that will house technology-enabled classrooms, caffeinated social space, meeting space, display space, and admissions. We want to make sure that people who come to Hampshire immediately see who we are and what we do. It will meet the living building challenge. That's described on those posters uh, on the fence there. That means it will make its own energy, treat its own waste, and gather its own water. It is an exacting standard. It means the building is being built without a long list of material whose manufacture or use damage human health and the environment. In fact, as we watch it go up, it makes you wonder why build buildings are built any other way. Actually, <clears throat> there, are, there are two living building challenge buildings under construction on this campus. Our future tenant and educational partner, the Hitchcock Center for Environmental Education, is building its new center where you see that gigantic pile of dirt over by the farm. This is the only place in the world where there are two LBC buildings uh, going up at the same time. <clears throat> we're, we're a teaching institution. Our buildings should speak and teach in themselves, and these will. Faculty are already planning courses that use the buildings themselves as teaching tools. And we've done some sprucing up around campus. Living spaces have been renovated, classroom, practice, rehearsal, studio, study spaces have been refurbished. The airport lounge has been reinvented as a flexible study and creative space. And an old horse barn has been upcycled into the Roos Roadhouse. The new home for mixed nuts in honor of the former chair of the cheese department. <laughs> and for myriad student activities. It is editable space designed by students for students so that they can use it as they see fit. And through the generous help of an alum who cares deeply about science, the labs in coal are being fully renovated, I believe for the first time in four decades. <clears throat> By the end of this summer, if all goes well, we will have installed 15 acres of solar collectors that will make us virtually 100% dependent on solar for our electricity on an annualized basis. Yeah. If, if we'd done that four years ago, it would have cost us a fortune. Now, it is going to save us a half a million dollars a year. By the end of the decade, we hope to replace the moldering hulks of Greenwich with, <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> right? we, had, we had a fire in one of the uh, Greenwich uh, mods, and to everyone's great disappointment, the sprinklers worked. <laughs> um, so we want to replace Greenwich 
with a set of structures that explore the range of what is possible with sustainable living space. We plan other changes. 50 years ago, in the making of the college, uh, when Pat Patterson and, and Chuck wrote it, they envisioned a campus that offered facilities and support services and academic programming that would, quote, enable students to thrive intellectually, physically, and socially. And I've often heard Chuck say that when he decided to locate the Robert Crown Center right next to the library, it wasn't an accident or a lack of space. It was trying to realize that vision. So in this time of accelerating change and multiplying stimuli and constant connection, most of our students arrive with limited skills for achieving balance and managing stress in their lives. They struggle to cope with expanded workloads, new social demands, and the search for identity and community. One key element in our plan going forward is to build on that link that the founders imagined between the library and the RCC both physically and programmatically. The knowledge commons, a renovation and repurposing of all of the spaces in the library building, will bring together a range of academic supports, media labs, and technology tools to house a thriving hub of intellectual activity. The adjacent wellness commons, an addition of a sustainably renovated Robert Crown Center, uh, will bring together all of the mental, physical health supports and now scattered across campus with various wellness activities. In combination with the new Knowledge and Wellness Commons, we plan to create a program that integrates health and wellness with academic inquiries into well-being and welfare and enables students to learn the practices of a balanced life. This constellation of ideas has generated a significant excitement among students who see it as a wonderful integration of Hampshire activities. So that's what we've been up to. A little taste of the state of the college. It is good. I'd like to conclude by telling you something you already know. You know it deeply. I suspect it's one of the reasons that you decided to spend this weekend on the grounds of this old orchard and these cow pastures. Hampshire not only pioneered interdisciplinary, inquiry-based, learner-centered education, it created a model for community-engaged learning and became a leader in many fights for justice. What each of you played a role in creating here is needed now more than ever. I hope that you will agree to join us in honoring our past by helping us to secure our future. Welcome back, and let's keep going.